But nevertheless, Ewan did just uh, foreshadow what we're going to talk about. Ewan, Yombo Visma. I mean, apart from that, it was strange Jonas Van Gogh AI. Yeah, what is this? Because I, I don't think I've heard of this. The other day, Jonas Van Gogh got a big contract extension up to 2027, a long one. He joins that special club with Pogacar, Pippo Ganna, and a bunch of other sort of Galacticos and uh, stars of the sport. But with that, they made an AI-generated video that was supposed to be him as a kid talking about his career. It was really strange. I didn't really understand why. It was postmodern at times. You didn't really know what was true and what was not. Because uh, you had this like little AI-generated child wearing a bike helmet in a Yumba Visma jersey, talking with an American accent about Yum- about Jonas Van Gogh's career, as if he was a kid. So it was like using like the future tense. So it was like, maybe I maybe I can win a Tour de France one day. And then it, it just like puts up pictures of Jonas Van Gogh. And it was supposed to be him. It's awful. I detest it so much. And I mean, Yumba Visma... They're not shy of using AI. There's been a sort of catchphrase here with the AI-generated tactics of Jumbo Visma. But, I mean, it really is AI-generated. Their Tour de France kit in 2022 was AI-generated. This awful contract extension video was AI-generated. And mm. they've got those AI-generated meal plans. So, I mean, there's there's a lot going on with AI at Jumbo Visma headquarters. But this also coincided in this whole aesthetic and marketing motif, which they've spent way too much money on, is linked to their Tour de France rebrand of Ride Your Dreams, which is in partnership with a theme park. So it's it's called Velodrome. A play on words with the Velodrome in French, being like the place where you cycle. We all know that. It's in English as well. But also Velodrome, like Velo, bike, Drome, the Dutch word for a dream, because it's all about living your dreams. So they, they've released this special edition Tour de France kit, uh, which I think is, quite frankly, awful. It's black and yellow. It's kind of reverse two-toned, but it's got this awful hexagon in the center. France is known as the hexagon. So they just got this like hexagon of France with the outline of France inside. I don't know why. With a bunch of stars. And the whole thing is about stars and constellations and following your dreams because anything can happen. Believe us, we did it last year. We followed our dreams and it became a reality. Well, actually, the day we're recording this is Sunday after uh, Liege, Bastogne, Liege. This is the final day you can pre-order your kits so you can have your constellation on it. So like from a special time and place that you want, you can get the stars on the jersey. The The design will be specially placed for your specific constellation in mind. The riders who are doing the Tour de France this year have all chosen their own constellations or whatever star pattern to be put on the back of the jersey. It's a lot of marketing going on. But in the process of releasing all this, they have accidentally told us their Tour de France team. Or maybe it might change, but these are the eight eight riders that were all shown modeling the new kit. Given that last year, they did the same thing, but only with like the stars. They were confident this year to to model the, the new kit they have for the Tour de France with eight riders, which also coincides with the eight riders that they would be riding the Tour de France with. So the eight riders at Jumbo Visma have modeled that their new Tour de France kit are Christophe Laporte, Nathan van Hoydonk, Dylan van Barle, Wout van Aert, Jonas Vingegaard, Sepp Kuss. That's not eight riders, but it's close enough. It's six riders. So... <laughs> But there's there's room there's room for two more people that will be in their Tour de France squads, which might be up for debate. But that's quite a big chunk of their tour squad that they have released with this kit reveal. Okay, they've got our pro cycling stats: Vingo, Kreisvik, Van Baal, Van Aert. Oh Benut, shit! Sorry, Kreisvik. He, he Christophe he's in Laporte. The yeah, Kreisvik Nathan Van Hoendijk. Pictures for the kit, so he he will be there. And uh, yeah, two, well, Nathan Van Hoendijk and Sepp Kroos. Sepp Kroos doing two. To... Exactly. That was that was what captured most imagination or dreams. So, but wait, wait. I'm 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 just gonna b- backtrack a bit. So ride your ride your dream dreams, mm-hmm. whatever, plural or not, singular. Is it like make a wish or what is it? I I'm really confused as to what it is. Maybe maybe I, I didn't specify enough. This is a collaboration with a theme park. So you get to go to a theme. So what? So you get to go to. Of retire towers resort or something like. Well, it's like it's like the Dutch equivalent. Let me let me get the press release again. You have to go to Disney it's, World. What? <laughs> it's with Efteling, which talks about the power of dreams because this place is the world of wonders. I mean, it's a fantasy themed theme park, and they've done a collaboration. It's odd. Imagine if Six Flags did a collaboration with Trek Zegafredo for our American listeners. 
Just imagine how chaotic and nonsensical that would be. This is what this is. And the whole velodrome thing only really works for Dutch speakers. It does not work in English, which I think makes it even more clunky. But they have paid a marketing firm an awful lot of money to get this done. And the one thing, like the Jonas Vingago AI contract renewal thing really irks me because they could have called up Jonas. They could have called up Jonas. And got him to do the thank you so much to Yumbo Visma and thank you. I'm so excited. Let's <laughs> let let's ride our dreams. Hashtag ride your dreams or whatever. Yeah, he you could have played along with the marketing thing. But instead of doing that and making it feel authentic, they got some AI generated kid that looks like something from the ring to, to read <laughs> to read out this AI generated script. You can't even tell if it's reality or not. It's it's ter it's terrifying. <laughs> I much preferred that kit from last year. I think that was so much nicer and so much cooler with the whole fine art design. This thing with the whole ride your dreams, please. It's marketing gobbledygook. <laughs> I mean, anyway, apart from your impersonations, we just, uh, I guess we've learned that you can't do a Jonas Vingol. Sean Kelly, very well, but uh, Vingol needs a bit more practice. <laughs> But the team that we were going to try and focus on before the, the marketing thing came in the way of it. Mingo, Kreuzvik, Van, Van Baal, Wout Van Aert, Benut, Laporte, Nathan Ron Hoy, don't accept Cruz. No Roglic, obviously. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, it's very similar to last year, apart from it's like no Van, ba it's Van Baal in and Roglic out, pretty much. Is that is that pretty much the nux of it? And let's face it, it was a it was a great team last year. It did the job because they won, so that's that that's good. Of course, they don't have Roglic this time. He who you could say was integral on Definitely. that stage eleven Definitely to was. up over Galibier to uh, Glenor. You know, you could say if it wasn't for Roglic being there, then actually Jonas might not have put in so many minutes into Pogacar. So I think that although it is a really good team, it does concern me in an element or two in that the mountain domestiques seem to really be Krauschweg and Kuth and Sepp Kuss. Is that right? Yes, um, I have a feeling that they're going to bring Keldermann because there's one opening, I believe. Uh, Maths is not my strong point, but I believe there's one opening and that would allow Keldermann there because we spoke the other yeah. week about how Keldermann was missed out. Yeah. I think it's also be interesting to see what Wout Van Aert does because you know he in years gone by was actually almost a part of the lead out well like the mountain drain. But then last year, of course, he was going for green jersey and he seemed kind of less capable of doing that mountain domestique job. Whereas you know what will he do this year is what I'm quite intrigued by for Wout Van Aert. Of course, he seems to usually pick up a stage or two, but is the green jersey still a thing which they're wanting to do? Or are they really just focused on just yellow? Hashtag write your dream. <laughs> Hashtag get Yoda's yellow. Again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Kelderman is definitely going to be in this team. Yeah, uh, I it think makes sense. Kuz is not going to be doing this, let's be honest. If he's spent from the Giro... There's no way they would bring Kelderman in and then not use him. But they've already got the promo picks for the new kit. <laughs> and Kuss is in them. What are they going to do about it? Scrap it? Come on. Is that, Kelderman wasn't dreams. there. This is Kelderman wasn't there. No Kelderman. Well, maybe... I mean, <laughs> I said the other week, they're too rigid with their with their tactics. The fact that they've done a full photo shoot in, in a kit that they've released two months before the Tour de France because they want to sell it in time shows that they're a little bit rigid here. Maybe Kuss will get struck off. Maybe he won't. But oh. if he wants to hashtag Ryder's dream, let him, let him hashtag Ryder's dream. And that dream is the Giro. Yumbo have too much money. <laughs> but they're just starting to do some really weird stuff. And well, it just doesn't make sense. Allegedly, Yumbo, the supermarket, does have too much money. But that's a, that's a question for a different day. <laughs> but okay, well, finishing this... Financial part of this, misconduct. <laughs> let's finish this segment with our sanity still intact. But UAT Memories are, we think, are going to be the big rivals. So in terms of this team, UAT Memories have strengthened themselves with Adam Yates, who's going to be, we think, at the Tour de France. So is this team weaker than the UAE team Emirates team who aren't going to be depleted by COVID or whatever it was last year. But who are UAE sending outside of like Pogaccia and Yates uh, and stuff or do we not know yet? Rafa Micah mm -hmm. potentially, Mark Soler, Doma Novak, that's kind of the speculation right now. Felix yeah. Gorshad should be there as well. Yeah, exactly. And you may, maybe even Mark Hirschi, so it's like Megal Biao would presume as well. So. Yeah, Megal will yeah. be there, I assume. 
Uh, it's tricky to say. I still feel like Yumbo Yumbo has dominance in terms of rulers, but in terms of climbing, I'd probably say that I favor UE right now. Yeah, Micah and Yates. And it's like, is, but it's like, is that massively useful considering that there isn't a cobbled stage this time around? You know, do, yeah, are, are, are you, have Yumbo looked at the route? That's <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> I completely agree because last year, I mean, that that first week was so pivotal. We had all yeah. these stages where we thought crazy stuff was going to happen over the in Calais, that Nubar stage. Yeah. We thought it was all going to split up. We had the cobble stage, the stage under Calais. They sort of made little cracks in the Pogacar ar in the armor early on last year. This year with the route, it just doesn't really work. There's a couple of hilly stages in the Basque Country. Then I think we're just going to go into normal sort of plain old flat stages, quite similar to the 2021 route, where we had the chaotic stuff at the start with hills, and then it settled down with the flat stages. I think that'll happen this year. It'll be um, less integral to have riders, to have rulers and so forth in this year's route. So I would say UAE have the upper hands. I think Yumbo might be a little bit too sort of nostalgic from last year. For instance, yeah. I don't think Van Bala really has a... <sighs> He should be on a Tour de France squad, but I don't think he fits into this Tour de France squad. Yeah, maybe Yumbo got, got, got AI to make the team. <laughs> Who knows? Chat GPT. Yeah, prompted. exactly. It's a bit weird. I think Adam Yates is such a weird one because last year, despite the fact that he dropped out of GC and in theory should have been like a domestique immediately for G, who was fighting for podium, he never really seemed to be that great of a kind of mountain super domestique for G. And it just makes me question whether he's got that ability in him, whether it's something he's trying having to learn. Like, I don't really know how he's going to fulfill that role or whether it'll feel like a square peg in a round hole. But this is Pogacar, it's not Geraint Thomas. This is a much more yeah. reliable GC leader. Last year, we were kind of left on tenterhooks of who's it going to be? Geraint Thomas was there. Pickcock was up in top 10 for a while, and as was Adam Yates, there were like sort of three musketeers, or three blind mice almost, not, not knowing which <laughs> which, really which leader to work mice. for, if you know what I mean. Like, if you recall that anarchical first two weeks of, of the Tour de France, none of them were really sort of working in a train for each other. It was it was each for their own. I think this is more structured. If Bogacar yeah. stays in his bike, he'll be fine. Yeah, I think you're right. 